Welcome back to Simple Truth. I want to uh, I want to start a series uh, and look at the life of Joseph and pull out just some simple truths about his life and what he uh, encountered. So I want you to grab a Bible, turn to Genesis chapter 37 is where I'm going to be. Now, uh, hopefully the word will catch up to me somewhere along the line here and you'll actually have uh, the Genesis uh, readings up with you and you can just listen to that before I'm talking and it'll be fantastic. But we don't have that yet. We're only on like chapter mm, three, I think it is. So she'll catch up. Look at verse one with me. It says this, Jacob lived in the land of his father's sojourings in the land of Canaan. There are these are the generations of Jacob, right? Joseph being 17 years old was pastoring the flock with his brothers. I want to stop right there. Uh, those of you who know me know that I'm going to probably never get past this phrase, right? And so this is going to be a very long study, but there's some great things that we can pull out of this story. The first one being, isn't it funny that frequently the people that God is going to use in the Old Testament have a moment with some sheep. They have a moment with a flock, right? God seemingly uses uh, sheep to prepare people to take care of people, right? Now, again, we don't do a lot of shepherding in today's world. I don't know if you've had sheep. I have had sheep. Uh, I've had them uh, several different times. Um, I don't have them right now for one really good reason. Uh, they are a pain, right? Uh, sheep uh, are really are the perfect example for taking care of people. Now, if you've listened to my simple truths over, over the years, you know that I talked about sheep before, so I'm not going to go back into that. But I'm telling you that God has preparatory moments for you and for me, right? So God says, listen, I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. I have uh, a way that you're going to team up with me. And in the Bible, that always has to do with taking care of people. You can't find an example of someone that God prepared to do anything other than take care of his people. There are a lot of people that God prepped for a lot of years to do simple acts of taking care of his people. But whether it's Moses, whether it's Abraham, whether it's Joseph, whether it's Jacob, Right? All of these different people, they were shepherds in nature. They took care of flocks. They took care of animals. And when you take care of animals, you're prepped to take care of people. Now, take that and look at your own life right now. And I want you to think about what is it that God uses consistently or has used in a way to help you take care of people. It's not just about right providing some food for them. It's the whole package. When you take care of sheep, you have to provide for them the three things that Jesus said God was going to provide for us. Food, right, clothing, and shelter. Those are the things that when you take care of sheep, now you don't like today, we have little dog jackets and coats and things like that that I'm not a big fan of. But we have to take care of the sheep. They have to be shorn. Otherwise, uh, the wool gets too heavy and they end up uh, hurting the actual sheep. But God says you need to feed them. You need to water them. You need to take care of them physically. Look after each sheep. Right? Learn what people, people need. Joseph was getting this training along with his brothers. Isn't it also interesting that there were a bunch of people learning how to be shepherds? A bunch of people taking care of sheep, right? But out of this, we know, because we know the story of Joseph, that God plucks Joseph out of those people. Why? That's a really good question. We're going to find that out. But one of the simple truths I want you to, to really hang on today is this idea that God is using something in your life, a situation, right? A job placement, a church, what you're doing at your church. He's using it to prepare you to take care of people. Really important 
concept for you and I to understand because if we're not careful, what happens is we're like me, where we get impatient with all of those things because we just want to get to the part we want to get to, which is taking care of people. And God says, no, you're going to learn how to take care of people well. It's funny, one of the things that has been on my brain for like six months now has really been this concept of love. And, and really, what does God mean with this whole idea of love? How to love people, right? And it is amazing the conflict that that has created. Because as I'm learning and trying to figure out, and God is putting me through this process, right, of how do you love people well, other people are reacting to that. Other people are, are looking and they're saying, hey, well, like, that's not what we've been taught. That's not how we've understand it. That's not how we would do it. I love it. Uh, our friend Virginia down here today said uh, something that uh, was leading me to want to you know, speak on that. And that is, listen, you do you and I'm going to do me. Now, again, at first, that sounds really selfish in nature. It sounds like, hey, you know what? You just pay attention to you, and I'll pay attention to me, and I'll do whatever I want. You do whatever you want. And it can get to judges where judges, uh, where God says to us that every man did what was right in his own eyes. That, that's not... Uh, that's not what she was saying, and that's not uh, the, the purpose. What it is is, listen, you have to read your Bible. You have to understand God, hear from God, learn from God, and stand on what God is telling you, right? And if we're not careful, what we do is we look to somebody else, not to affirm what God is telling us, but to, uh, to actually give us what we should be doing, right? We're looking for instruction. I, I want you to understand that when we talk about people, I'm not looking to my friends for instruction on how to be more godly, really. I'm looking for them an affirmation that I'm doing that process myself, that, that I'm really trying to hear from God. And what I'm hearing from God is right. Shepherding does all of that stuff. Joseph was learning to hear from God. He was learning how to take care of, of things that, that were important to God, right? And then that's going to translate to later on in his life. So I only got through the first part of a verse uh, that will make some people happy. It's way more than the people who can only get through one word of a verse, right? So come back next week because I have some more to share with you about Joseph.